Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at an operational amplifier actually it's an audio amplifier the LM380 and the reason I was prompted to have a look at this chip was a circuit that I spotted in a, a 1980s electronics magazine that was making a rather novel use of it so let's have a look what this chip is and what it can do the LM380 then comes in a 14 pin dill package amongst other things there are other versions the one that I've got is most definitely a 14 pin dill it doesn't have the notch in the end but it does have the embossed dot on the the lower left hand side that you can hopefully see there now superficially it looks like a normal normal op amp with a positive and a negative input um, however this is a little bit different because it's also got that input from pin 1 which is called bypass now I'll just read to you from the uh, data sheet because it's interesting it says it's an audio power amplifier with an internally fixed gain of 34 dB and a unique input stage allows ground reference input signals. The output automatically self-centers to one half of the supply voltage and that's something we're going to make use of in a circuit a little later on. It also goes on to say that the output is short circuit proof with internal thermal limiting. And the package outline is dual in line as it says it uses a copper lead frame and the center three pins on either side com comprise a heat sink which makes the device easy to use in the standard PC layouts apparently so those six pins there I've marked with blue as ground uh, you'd probably be um, on fairly steady ground to say yes well they're ground aren't they so they're bound to be connected to pin 7 uh, au contraire not in this circuit here's the internal circuit diagram from uh, from the TI data sheet and if you look on the, the, the sort of the bottom left hand side pin 7 ground there uh, does indeed ground the bulk of the circuit however pins 3, 4, 5 10, 11 and 12 which are the heatsink pins also act as the ground for the output stages so those two grounds are different and that's something which I ended up making use of um, in one of the circuits we're going to have a look at uh, in a few minutes so it's an audio amplifier and I think it'd be really dull and boring if we just made it into an audio amplifier so let's um let's do a couple of things with it that aren't audio amplifiers well not in the strictest sense anyway so first of all let's let's make an oscillator now an oscillator normally is an amplifier with its output fed back to its input so there's positive feedback and you can see here on this circuit that the output pin 8 comes out through a 220 microfarad capacitor and is fed to the speaker which produces a, a ghastly howl at 4 kilohertz I'll show you that in a moment or two on the bench uh, but but it also branches off through a network of three 1k resistors and 300 nanofarad capacitors and that is of course the feedback circuit for the oscillator and that returns into pin 6 which is the negative going input now ordinarily um, that wouldn't oscillate because you effectively have got negative feedback there so what we're going to do is we'll use the oscilloscope to investigate what's going on at the output on pin 8 but we'll also look what happens at the top of those 300 nanofarad capacitors and we'll have a look what happens to the phase because by the time that uh, signal or that waveform reaches pin 6 um, it's no longer in the same time phase as it was when it left pin 8. So uh, looking on the breadboard then uh, hopefully that's relatively straightforward I've labelled up the components for you uh, big can at the top is the 220 microfarad capacitor and the uh, 2.7k resistor and the 100 nanofarad capacitors on the output are at the top right at the extreme top right you can see a couple of leads coming off that go to the speaker and then we've got the network of three 1k resistors and 300 nanofarad capacitors that eventually uh, feed back to the input and you should be able to see above and below the circuit that I have connected all those um, pins together that uh, that form that second uh, output stage ground and the white the orange the blue and the green wires are simply takeoffs for us to have a look what's going on on the oscilloscope okay let's um let's go and have a look at that on the bench 
Okay, here's the circuit laid out on the breadboard. As you've just seen, currently not powered up. And I've got a little extension speaker attached at the moment. So I'm going to um, apply the, uh, the power now to the board. Uh, cover your ears. So there's the oscillation. I think we'll just unplug that. We don't need to hear it. We can actually see it. So there's the oscilloscope trace. And that's taken directly from pin 8 of the IC along this white wire here. So now what we'll do is we'll step along the three uh, stages of phase changing that are in that, that feedback loop as we've just looked at in the circuit diagram. So firstly the purple trace is the first capacitor and as you can see we're starting to get some of the effects of the capacitor smoothing the edges off. We have got a, a slight change in phase. If we now go to the second capacitor we can see we've got a further change in phase and if we go to the third capacitor here okay it's jumping it out a little bit because I've got the time base on, on the first one but if we just pause the scope so you can see so we've definitely got phase change there and I've also got the scope doing the measurement for me so it's saying 3.82 kilohertz and the phase difference between channel 1 and channel 4 is about 157 degrees, 141 mean. If we just let the scope run a bit longer, I suspect that mean will creep up. Yes, it is. Um, but we've got about 150 degrees, something like that, of, of phase change going on between the the start and the finish of that uh, of that negative uh, that positive feedback loop. And obviously, the up the IC would not oscillate. Um, if the phase hadn't been changed because that negative feedback would effectively um, uh, cancel out what was going on. So there you go, that's a bit of phase change in action. Appreciate that's probably a tad confusing there, so we'll just have a look at the screen grabs I've taken from the scope uh, and compare it to the circuit. Here's a reminder of the circuit then, of the phase shift oscillator that we've just seen, and the output um, as taken from pin 8 on the IC is the waveform that you can see there and at that point the scope reckons it's about 3.75 kilohertz something like that so then moving on to the three further measurements that we took on the first node of the feedback loop uh, the purple trace gave us that uh, that view there the second node with the blue trace gives us a further phase change and finally the last node gives us a phase change as per the green trace and if you look at um, a slightly larger version of the measurement statistics off the scope we've got a phase change there of about 140-ish degrees something like that so not 180 which probably accounts for the fact that um, the output waveform uh, isn't actually uh, equal in the sense that um, the pulses are shorter than the times that it's switched off. I think if it was 180 degrees they would be equal. But hopefully you get the idea. So to enable oscillation to occur in that circuit, uh, those three capacitor resistor uh, stages have uh, changed the phase and allowed the oscillation to occur. OK, let's now move on and look at another circuit that uses the LM380. OK, the next circuit then, um, I'm going to call it a, a virtual ground, but it's a way of producing um, a dual supply rail. Now there's lots of ways to do this, and this is probably a slightly over the top way, but it is an interesting use of the uh, of this amplifier. So here's the circuit which, which I spotted in, uh, a nine, I think it was a 1980s electronics mag, and when I saw it, it intrigued me, so I thought uh, this is what encouraged me to actually get an LM380 and actually have a go at this. So I built the circuit exactly as you can see there and we've got um, the supply voltage coming in on the left hand side just a conventional um, two rail power supply and what we're attempting to produce here is uh, a centre ground which is on the right hand side there as zero volts out and then V plus out and V minus out are going to effectively be half of the input voltage. So we are, we are producing a, a split uh, output rail. And remember the op amp has got current limiting, so effectively it's also uh, current limited because it will be returning back through the uh, 0 volt connection. 
now when I built this circuit on the breadboard um, I switched it on and immediately I noticed that uh, even without anything attached to the output it was drawing over half an amp and the LM380 was getting extremely hot so I switched off pretty quickly uh, assuming that I'd made a mistake and I checked carefully and uh, actually I hadn't made a mistake um, I had actually built it exactly like it was there so I started to have a think and I thought well something not quite right here so what I need to do is do some current limiting so I added a 150 ohm resistor between pin 3 and ground as you can see there and I did that if you just remind ourselves of the internal circuit diagram that, that pin 3 and also 4, 5, 10, 11 and 12 if you connect them are all connected together and they are the ground for the output stage and I suspected that the main current uh, draw that was going on here was likely to be through those two output transistors as that's a relatively straightforward path um, for the for the current to take and sure enough um, with a current limiting resistor of 150 ohms in we reduce the quiescent uh, supply current to about um, about 80 or 90 milliamps certainly something that was um, unlikely to to fry the chip so that that's my modification to the circuit so let's have a look at that on the breadboard and it's extremely straightforward or should be I've labeled up some of the components there the 150 ohm resistor is that um, one at the bottom left you can see the trimmer pot on the left hand side and you can obviously see the chip and there's the various connections from the plus and minus supply rails at top and bottom and then we've got those two 22 microfarad capacitors across the output and the white uh, jumper that runs across the center of the board um, is essentially the zero volts out and then the, the plus, plus and the minus supply rails are also the V plus out and the V minus out. Now there's some additional circuitry on there which I've not shown on the circuit diagram that's just two LEDs on each side with current limiting resistors just to to let the circuit run and uh, and see if it was um, able to run sensibly for a while so that's all that is so let's go and have a look at that on the bench okay here's the arrangement on the breadboard and I've just got these LEDs here running just to demonstrate the output is, is capable of, of driving uh, something um, for no other reason than just to show you that's working so if we just check the input voltage uh, I'm currently using about, about 10 volts there so if I now put the negative probe onto the um, the virtual ground output and then check what I've got I should have on the positive side if I just find a serial connection got plus point about point four nine something like that and on the minus side yeah plus point point four eight um, sorry minus point four eight something like that so you can hopefully see we've got appropriate ground level there now if I uh, just attach those if I can manage to do this with uh, using three hands if I, if I now up the voltage so I'm going to up the voltage to about um, 12 volts something like that just gently cruise on up to approximately 12 there we are that's about 12 volts on the input side and it'll, I'm sure it'll come as no surprise to you that we've now got um, about minus 6.1 on the negative side and hopefully if I can find the connection there and 6 point, plus 6.09 on the positive side so you can see the virtual ground um, does the trick uh, rather well and we've obviously got um, current limiting uh, facility within the op amp as well for our little dual rail power supply okay well that's a couple of uh, novel uses for the LM380 I suspect as an audio amp it's probably been superseded by the, the LM386 these days but they're certainly still available I had no trouble getting one off eBay and uh, an interesting uh, circuit to have a play with so hopefully you've found that useful and perhaps learned a little bit about 
about phase and about virtual grounds. I did do a video on phase, I'll put a link up above there to that video and you can have a look. Also the Kiwitz multimeter I was using there, I did a review of that a um, couple of weeks back, so I'll put a link to that up there as well. And um, if you're interested in a meter like that, have a look at the links in the description, you can get a discount there and uh, purchasing through those links actually helps uh, this channel and anything I do make will go straight back into improving the content. Thanks very much for watching, please consider liking and subscribing if you've not done that already and let other people know about the channel, that would be great. We'll see you on the next video.